Hey practice buddies, today I'd like to teach you the secret of Russian heavy bow technique. Russian heavy bow technique is the second in a trilogy of Russian technique videos I'd like to share with you. Russian heavy bow technique is probably the most important member of the trilogy. Why is that? Well, two things. First, because it addresses the prime directive of all violinists, which is to improve the quality of our sound. And second, because violin playing is not actually split 50-50 between left hand and bow hand. In fact, violin playing is 10% left hand, and 90% right hand. The bow is pretty much responsible for all aspects of violin playing except the actual notes themselves. Which means, if you have control of the bow, you have control of tonal variety, volume of sound, expression, projection, nuance, and even the maximum speed at which you can play. In this video, I'd like to explain to you the secret of Russian heavy bow technique using two pieces of repertoire, the opening bars of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto and the second movement of the Bach Double Violin Concerto. So what exactly is Russian heavy bow technique and how do we implement it? Well, it's actually quite simple. It's both a concept and a technique. Let's start with the concept first. The concept is the idea of weight, of transferring the weight of your arm through your shoulder, into your elbow, down your wrist, and so onto the string of the violin. We don't want to think of pressure, we want to think of weight. And the way to implement it is by essentially focusing on relaxation. So if we were to take the beginning of the Tchaikovsky, it's actually marked piano. Tchaikovsky marks it as piano, but the orchestra has just finished playing it. Full orchestra at full volume has just finished playing. So we want to continue the feeling of weight and presence in our sound. It's a bit like when you are going from a very light and bright environment to sudden darkness. It takes time for your eyes to adjust. It's the same with the ears. The audience would have heard the full orchestra playing at full volume, and now you as the soloist have to project and fill the concert hall with the acoustic sound of this pretty much tiny instrument. So, how do we do that? Well, it's all about relaxation and the concept of the heavy bow. So we start off, we want to imagine the weight transferring through our shoulder, through the elbow, into the wrist and into the fingers, and especially in the index finger and the pinky, and then onto the string. Now, of course, he marks it piano, as I said earlier, but it's not piano that we're going to go for. It's a wholesome sound which is not gritty. So we take the grit out of the sound, we've got a piano which is concert hall level. And as we approach the upper registers of the violin, Tchaikovsky marks it louder. So we actually have to increase the application of the weight of our arm into the string. So we still got to avoid the grittiness, but we've got to actually increase the volume. So this is where the concept of Russian heavy bow technique happens. That is the concept of Russian heavy bow technique. But how do we actually do that? Well, as I said earlier, it's about relaxation. Relaxation and the feeling of well-being in your body is not actually produced by the conscious thought of relaxing. In fact, if we think of the word relaxing in our mind, it doesn't really have an effect 
Relaxation and fight or flight is actually controlled by a very primitive and rear part of the brain called the amygdala. And the amygdala does not understand the written word. It does not understand language. It only understands visual stimuli. That means that you have to think of an image that relaxes you. For instance, a beautiful tropical island or a cherry blossom falling in the springtime. These visual stimuli will actually help your amygdala to relax. That's why when we often tell ourselves to calm down, calm down, it doesn't really work. What we actually have to do to calm ourselves in a nervous situation is to think visually of something that is calming, such as gentle waves on a coral sand beach. In the case of Russian heavy bow technique, we need a visual stimulus to encourage our arm to relax and enable us to transfer the weight of our arm into the bow. And to do that we can think of an element passing from our mind down our neck, into our shoulder, down our arm, into the elbow, along the arm, into the wrist, into the fingers and then transferring it into the bow. You can think of many different things. Water flowing down through our veins or fire or electricity. I like electricity. Whatever you feel comfortable with visualizing, imagine it flowing through your veins in having a calming effect on your muscles, allowing them to weigh down onto the bow which you support to the level which is appropriate for the dynamic and the quality of the sound. We don't want to obviously put too much weight into the bow because then it will create a gritty effect in the sound. But we want to control that weight and to control it we need to have a relaxed arm and see if that makes a difference to the passage that you choose to play. Let's try it with Tchaikovsky. If you managed to relax your arm completely throughout that and then control the weight application through that passage, then you should congratulate yourself because it's an extremely difficult thing to do in practice, even though it's quite a simple concept. The Russian school of violin playing actually pioneered this heavy bow technique after composers such as Tchaikovsky, Glinka, Mussorgsky, Prokofiev, Rachmaninoff and Shostakovich began composing works which involved so many orchestral players and with such heavy instrumentation that it became difficult for a solo violinist to project to more than 2,000 people and fill up a concert hall. And so the great Russian teachers and violin masters such as Zeitlin, Mostras, Auer, Braun, Jamplonsky had to devise many ways that a violinist could make themselves heard above the sheer power of the full orchestra. The result was Russian heavy bow technique. That was all well and good for the Romantics, but what about the Baroque composers? How does Russian heavy bow technique help us with something like the Bach double violin concerto second movement? Let's implement it into a Baroque piece and see how it works there. So let's take the first violin part of the Bach double violin concerto second movement and see how Russian heavy bow technique holds up in a Baroque piece. First of all, the Baroque style Now let's try the same passage but with a more romantic style which would probably be a little bit louder and with a little bit more vibrato.
why don't we uh, just try the whole thing again? For that, I'm going to need some help. <laughs>